Not every day on the Appalachian Trail is, has spectacular views and wide open vistas. Some are gray and dreary, still beautiful in their way. There's, uh, and wasn't is always happy either. There's long, one has to hike long days. It's hard work. Uh, I'm currently on my way up something called Unica Mountain in Tennessee. It's about 5,000 feet. Uh, and it seems like a good day to treat you to uh, the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock by T.S. Eliot. Let us go then, you and I, when the evening is spread out against the sky like a patient etherized upon a table. Let us go through certain half-deserted streets, the muttering retreats of restless nights in one-night cheap hotels and sawdust restaurants with oyster shells. Streets that follow like a tedious argument of insidious intent to lead you to one overwhelming question. Oh, do not ask, what is it? Let us go and make our visit. In the room, the women come and go, talking of Michelangelo. The yellow fog that rubs its back upon the window panes. The yellow smoke that rubs its muzzle on the window panes. Licked its tongue into the corners of the evening. Lingered upon the pools that stand in drains. Let's fall upon its back the soot that falls from chimneys. Slipped by the terrace, made a sudden leap, and seeing that it was a soft October night, curled once about the house and fell asleep. And indeed, there will be time. Time for the yellow smoke that slides along the street, rubbing its back upon the window panes. There will be time, there will be time. Time to prepare a face, to meet the faces that you meet. Time to murder and create. And time for all the works and days of hands that lift and drop a question on your plate. Time for you and time for me. And time yet for a hundred indecisions and a hundred visions and revisions all before the taking of a toast and tea. In the room, the women come and go, talking of Michelangelo. And indeed there will be time, time to turn back and descend the stair with a bald spot in the middle of my hair. And they will say, how his hair is growing thin. My morning coat, my collar mounted firmly to the chin, my necktie, rich and modest, but asserted by a simple pin, 
and they will say how his arms and legs are thin. Do I dare disturb the universe? In a minute there is time for decisions and revisions, which a minute will reverse. For I have known them all already, the mornings and the evenings and the afternoons. I have measured out my life with coffee spoons. I have heard the voices dying with the dying fall beneath the music from a farther room. And should I then presume? For I have known the eyes already, eyes that fix you with the formulated phrase. And when I am formulated and sprawling on a pin, and when I am pinned and wriggling on the wall, how should I begin to spit out all the butt ends of my days and ways? And how should I begin? For I have known the arms already, known them all. Arms that are white and braceleted and bare, but in the lamplight down by light brown hair. Is it perfume from a dress that makes me so digress? Arms that lie along a table or wrap about a shawl. And should I then presume? And how shall I begin? Shall I say I have been through narrow streets at dusk and watched the smoke that rises from the pipes of lonely men in shirt sleeves leaning out of windows? I should have been a pair of ragged claws scuttling across the floors of silent seas. And the afternoon, the evening, sleeps so peacefully, smoothed by long fingers. Spread out on the floor, here beside you and me. And should I, after tea and ices, have the strength to force the moment to its crisis? But though I have wept and fasted, wept and prayed, and seen my head grown slightly bald, brought in upon a platter, I am no prophet, and it is no great matter. I have seen the moment of my greatness flicker and the eternal footman hold my coat and snicker. And in short, I was afraid. And would it have been worth it after all, after the cups, the marmalade, the tea, among the porcelain, among some talk, of you and me, would it have been worthwhile to have bitten off the matter with a smile, to squeeze the universe into a ball, to roll it towards some overwhelming question, to say, I am Lazarus back from the dead. I have come back to tell you all. I shall tell you all when one settling a pillow by her head, should say, that is not what I meant at all. That is not it at all. And would it have been worth it after all? Would it have been worthwhile after sunsets and the dooryards and the sprinkled streets, after the novels and the teacups, 
and the skirts, the trail across the floor, and this, and so much more. I cannot say just what it is I need, but is it the nerves by a magic lantern were thrown upon a screen? Would it have been worthwhile if one turning towards a window or throwing off a shawl should say, that is not it at all. That is not what I meant at all. No! I am not Prince Hamlet, nor was meant to be. I am an attendant lord, one that will do to swell a progress, start a scene or two, advise the prince, no doubt an easy tool, cautious, politic, meticulous, full of high sentence, but perhaps a bit obtuse, at times indeed, perhaps ridiculous, indeed, at times, the fool. I grow old, I grow old. I shall wear the bottoms of my trousers rolled. Shall I part my hair behind? Do I dare to eat a peach? I shall wear white flannel trousers and walk upon the beach. I have heard the mermaid singing each to each. I do not think that they will sing to me. I have seen them riding seaward on the waves blown back, combing their white hair by the wind blown back. When the wind blows the water white and black, we have lingered in the chambers of the sea by sea girls wreathed in seaweed, red and brown until human voices wake us and we drown.